you, the two of you set up these rules for how you were going to run your joint careers, and could you just summarize them for us? Well, we, you know, as you pointed out earlier, Adam, uh, um, we were both sort of super achievers, and um, we knew that when we were trying to meld these two careers together that um, we had to uh, agree that we would, in a certain sense, sacrifice our individual identities um, to this joint effort. And that, that was the hardest part. Uh, uh, because, you know, invitations would come in and, uh, you know, to give this honor lecture, that honor lecture. For, for many, many years we rotated them um, um, just, just one after the other. No matter who got the invitation, it, we would rotate them or we would get deliver joint lectures. Um, now I think we're, <laughs> at the end, we're, we're sort of getting separate invitations like the, yeah. the one to this symposium that you ran. But, um, but in the beginning, it, it was tough, especially because Joe had a, more of an, a reputation than I did. He had uh, published an important paper on cholesterol and, and heart attacks uh, when he was in Seattle as a geneticist. So he was already known in the field, of, in the heart disease field, and I, I was not known at all. So I think it was very important that and if you look back at all of our early papers, uh, we just totally rotated first authors and last authors. Um, you know, and that's hard for a lot of people. I think that's where most partnerships come apart uh, because, um, you know, they fight for credit or for, um, or for uh, you know, applause. I mean, one thing I, I think Joe and I share is that you know, again, it sounds self-serving, but but we really tend, we really do our experiments for our own internal satisfaction, and not for uh, external applause. I think it's really. I feel so sorry for some scientists I know who are really great scientists, but they judge their progress by you know how many uh, papers they publish in high-profile journals, or how many invitations they get, or what people say about them. Um, they're trying to impress somebody else. And one nice thing about having a partnership is you, you, I only have one person to impress, and that's him. And I think it's vice versa. So, um, so it frees us up from, from some of those pressures. So the two, um, I always tell people that ask about partnerships, there are two um, occupational diseases of long-term collaborations like we have. One is um, astigmatism. If you don't see eye to eye on the big picture, then you're in trouble. Okay, that's one thing. We do argue about details, but we definitely pretty much agree on the big picture. And like, I'll tell a fellow to do an experiment when they ask advice a certain way, and Michael suggests another way, and the smart ones will do it both ways. And then probably neither one works, and they come out with a, a better way. But And then the second one is egotitis, which Mike was referring to. If you uh, try to take credit with between the two of us and, uh, and say, I did, thought about this and you didn't and so forth and so on. And then one of us will have a bruised ego. So that's why we've avoided that mm -hmm. sort of problem. And the fellows and students learn if they try to play one of us off on the other, it doesn't work. So that, they learn that fairly fast.